Veranda, I'm interested in the, let's just uh, reprise recently. Mr. Gove talking about life outside the EU unless the Europeans give us back lots of our powers. Mr. Cameron kind of implying but not quite saying, I'll give you a referendum. Uh, the government policy or the Conservative side to opt out of EU measures and law and order and others. What's your party making of all this? Well, clearly, these are not positions that are Liberal Democrat positions, that are they? That I've worked out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly good. Um, that's why they pay you the big bucks. But, they do? Uh, <laughs> the, I think, you know, the, the, I think what it seems to me is that this is the moment when fear of UKIP in the Tory mm. party starts to actually affect the British national interest. I don't see how you can look at this proposition on opting out of EU justice powers and take it seriously. You're mm. talking about people smuggling, you're talking about drug trafficking, you're mm. talking about money laundering, fraud, all the things which we, you know, anti-terrorism, things on which we really, really rely. Only today we're reminded that the number of, 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 of children, sex slaves, etc., being trafficked into this country is actually rising. We need these powers and we need this cooperation. So, what so well, you have to fight terrible rearguard actions within the coalition, don't you? But one thing on which uh, I believe Nick Clegg and David Cameron do agree is the desirability of trying to keep the, the, the financial contributions to the EU budget down. Mm. Um, what they obviously disagree about fundamentally is, is how well, everything, okay. everything, all the other EU policies, but also how okay. you should negotiate from within the EU. You've got to be in there the, arguing your case inside. The fact is, with the exception of Ken Clark, the Tories now in, in Parliament are a wholly Eurosceptic party. Indeed, if anything, they're more than Eurosceptic. And Mr Cameron is now under huge pressure. Uh, and he doesn't quite n know what to do, I would suggest, which is why kind of um, dog whistle words like a, like a, a fresh mandate, uh, mm. not saying referendum, what does he do? Well, uh, the Cabinet is pretty much Eurosceptic to a man, who's so, with the exception of King Clark. However, that is not the same as saying that they want to leave the European Union. Mm. Uh, you know, this lot are not going to give the British public a vote on in and out. And so what they go around doing is, uh, you know, stirring things up, giving a hint that there might be a referendum mm. on this and they might put their foot down So where does that, that lead, lead well, to? Well, uh, of course, eventually it will lead to a lot, uh, another lot of disappointment because people are not going to get a referendum anytime soon. And by that, I mean, the Cameron's position is we can't have a referendum until the Eurozone issue has settled down. Well, I'm not sure the Eurozone settle, uh, situation will well, settle way out. through the next in, election. In a decade, I don't think. Mm. So, I mean, this thing will be postponed and postponed and postponed. Now, it, it also takes you to the strategic question. You know, is David Cameron now about positioning the party on the middle ground, which is the point on which he won the leadership of the Conservative Party? And which is where his speech suggested he wants to be. Mm. Or is he now, uh, not only with the Euro thing, but also with the... The, the burglar's charter, you know, the anti-burglar's charter. You know, is he appealing for the, the vote on the right? And you might say, well, of course, he's trying to do a bit of both. But actually, the signal that comes out, I think, is pretty confused. But I, what should Labour do, Alistair, on the Europe issue? Uh, well, I hope they don't push too far on this referendum route, because I just don't think they it's must be sensible. There must be some... He's saying, look, we could scotch yeah, the Tories and, and, and it, But I think I, but I, I agree manifesto. with Miranda. I think, I think it is one of those issues where all of the parties have to view it from the genuine assessment of the national interest. Mm. And my worry about Cameron at the moment is he's just kind of stumbling along. To have Michael Gove, who's obviously quite a senior minister in the Cabinet, saying that he actually doesn't mind if we come out of Europe, and for there to be no sense of pushback on that from Cameron, no. it's almost like he's well, allowing this You know debate. the weasel way that was Shocking. done too. Mr Gove no. hasn't said a word. No. It but, was but, all done through what we think was a special uh, ad advisor on this yeah, issue. Control, but won't you all be like headless chickens in 2014 if UKIP comes first in the European elections? And your lot come fifth. OK, but... That'll you know, be interesting. You have to withstand it. You have to, you, you have to carry on. I, I, yeah, I think this is right. You, you, you have to actually just doggedly right. keep arguing yeah. for what you think might, is the, the national the interest. In the general election, that's not going to happen. No, I, I mean, well, I you know, the, Gre no, the Greens no, have won the European elections election. Before, before the general election. But what, what you have to keep focus on is, yes, you may sacrifice four percentage of the national vote to UKIP in a general election but it's much more important to go for 10 or 15% in the middle ground of politics. You've just uh, got to my, keep focused on My hope on, on Cameron yeah. is that because he does have to go to these summits, and even though they're wretched and they're difficult and the rest of it, I think he's been there long enough now to know that actually he does have to do a lot of the work that he does at that level with these other leaders. And the idea of Britain kind of being out of that is, I think, catastrophic. Well, interesting, the voice of moderation in this is now William Hague. Mm. He's mm. gone native in the yeah. Foreign Office, mm -hmm. and the Tory Eurosceptics are furious because he used to be the spokesman. Do you